We'll come after this short break to my presentation on modeling concrete properties and uh, dealing with the new approaches given in the model code uh, 2020. And to start with, uh, this is in fact the quadrature of the circle. This chapter comprises around about 15% of the volume, uh, nearly 200 equations, and I have 12 minutes to present it. <laughs> I try to do my very best, but first let me introduce my co-author. This is Mona Bumasa. Mona Bumasa is a specialist in durability in service life design. She joined uh, my group, this is the Action Group 13, which is behind these, uh, all these models, which uh, will be presented in the chapter 14. And it was my idea to make her a co-author for several reasons. First, she is a really excellent expert. Second, she has experience in practice, not only academics. Third, she is a lady, and fourth, she is young. And so this is a transition, the transition to the next generation, because what we are doing has to be developed further by young people, which we have to educate. Okay, after this, I would like to start and uh, give you a brief overview, a very brief overview uh, on the chapter of uh, concrete. What is our target? We would like to provide the designer with a physical sound code type models on material characteristics for crude estimate, for more sophisticated methods of design, and for finite element uh, applications. We have a level approach here, and what we do is we maintain the compressive strength based modeling. That many models are based on the compressive strength. This is associated with some problems. I will deal with them uh, in a few uh, seconds. Why we have to do the work in, for the model code 2020, we have already a very excellent document, the model code 2010, but no, we have an advancement in knowledge. We have new finding on properties and modeling. And what is the most decisive, we have a change in the composition of the common structural concrete due to sustainability. No? Then we have also changes in the requirements related to, to application and exposure. And what is also important, we need performance test results to be included in the models, uh, to improve our models. And well, in, uh, as a whole, it is a holistic approach no, uh, covering the whole life cycle of uh, structure. Well, a principle, to uh, have to deal with all these problems and to uh, not have a too large scope is that you have to look for formula where you introduce some factors taking into consideration particular concrete property. This makes it makes no sense yeah, to have a different kind of concrete, different models. We should have one model and we should modify the model né, by means of uh, factors uh, to be uh, used to be uh, adjusting the, pro the behavior uh, of the concrete. And this principle was introduced for the model code 2010 and it was uh, certainly maintained for model code 2022. Here is the list of uh, contents of model code 2002 of the chapter. For 14 concrete. No? I don't go through all these uh, chapters now, sub chapters, no? which deal everything no? constitutive modeling, material modeling, durability modeling, everything is still. I just is show you uh, where there are the new ones compared to model code 2010. We have a specification approach for durability. We have provisions for concrete material quality. We have provisions for environmental performance. Further, we have here on the right side, you can see evaluation of the equivalent performance for non-conventional concrete and uh, concrete with recycled aggregate is also dealt with in this uh, chapter. It's also impossible to deal with these few uh, uh, subjects in, within 10 minutes, so I just uh, selected some few aspects uh, to uh, indicate them to you. <clears throat> well, a, a major problem from the beginning was that we are creating a code in a phase of time where the concrete composition is completely changing. 
This means we have new types of free and concrete and you're going around to the different presentation, nearly every second presentation uh, gives uh, in, uh, insight in how concrete composition uh, is changed uh, in order to achieve more sustainability. This is we have new binders, low binder content, new types of aggregate and so on. And the consequence is we don't have models on this. We have no consolidated knowledge on these new types of concrete. Uh, and uh, we have, are not able to use the well-established, in 50 years established, uh, the strength-based concepts. They cannot be uh, applied to the new types of concrete. It doesn't work. No? So we need performance-based testing and modeling. Uh, and this is uh, prescribed in uh, the model code. Well. And it is very important at this point, right at the beginning, to distinguish when we can use the model as it is given in the model code, in the chapter concrete, or when we have to do additional tests. And uh, our distinction is made by dividing, subdividing into conventional concrete and non-conventional concrete. And you see the conventional concrete are these, we are accustomed to normal strength, high strength concrete, New concrete, of course, and also old concrete from existing structures. And the non-conventional concrete cover, in particular, the green and maybe any others being developed in the future. And we want to have that our model code is not outdated. Already when new concretes are coming in, it should be uh, able to use no, uh, when we deal with new kinds of concrete. And I have also uh, listed in the last line the model basis uh, of course, we have the strength grade basis or the performance basis for conventional concrete. For non-conventional concrete, there is only the performance test basis. And it decisively, these tests are specified in the model code 2020. And there is a background document explaining to the people how to uh, run tests ne, in order to modify the equations given in uh, the model code, which are valid, of course, uh, for the time being for conventional concrete. This is, uh, has been a main target in uh, our uh, work. Well, uh, we dealt also, of course, with um, environmental performance, and we were thinking about how to uh, move a little bit from a qualitative description to a quantitative one. As engineers, we needed to express ourselves in quantitative, in figures. Uh, and uh, we have also to keep in mind that, of course, uh, reducing the CO2 emission is a major target. The global warming potential has to be reduced. But just looking to this one aspect is too narrow. But think about it. if I make a concrete you know, with a very low global warming potential, it may only have a lifetime of five years. After five years, I have to renew the structure. And every five years, I have to do it. So you can imagine you know, that you have, of course, for the individual structure, a low warming potential. But in the overall, over 100 years, you know, it adds up. So you see, you have to imply other factors, and the factors are performance and service life. The higher the performance and the higher the service life, the higher the concrete sustainability uh, potential, and uh, the environmental impact reduces this potential. It's a simple equation. It needs some explanation. This explanation is to a short extent given on the left-hand side of the model code, but it needs a longer explanation in the bulletin, which is associated uh, with uh, this chapter uh, 14. Well, of course, these parameters can be easily selected. I did it here as just as an example. Oh, but uh, yes, now I was pushing on the wrong button now here. Uh, here, uh, I, I just did it for compressive strength and service life design and uh, WP. I could do it also for others. This is a little bit described uh, in uh, the background document to give the people who are developing the concrete a calculational tool to get an estimate on the durability of, uh, on the sustainability of the material. Well, this is a chart from my textbook. It was already shown by Carmen. Uh, it is well known since 30 or 40 years. 
What is interesting for me in this context is, because I am a person trying to model things on a level of material, is uh, which is the level we can introduce in the uh, model code. And uh, here, for example, I have written, you see it here, where we have a physical model of level of approximation for, that is, we know everything and have a, are able to do a full probabilistic uh, service life design. And uh, you can uh, see here that uh, if we have, of course, if we look into the steel, carbonation and chlorides, we can do it perfectly. It has been uh, shown by, by Carmen, also used, uh, has mentioned it. No? We have, of course, also good uh, models for thermal cracking and for shrinkage. We have some models in development for abrasion, but for example, for uh, the a scaling of frost, a uh, very important attack in our area. Uh, uh, we have really no model uh, uh, of level four, even uh, level, we have level two, uh, but not more. And all the others you see here for alkali aggregate erection, delayed etrangate formation, uh, and uh, we have uh, no uh, model available to complete modeling of the material uh, behavior. Well, this is all has been explained. I can skip it here now. It is also a principle which has been introduced a couple of years ago. You find this uh, figure in the chapter 14 of the new uh, model code. Well, and uh, if you combine those things for service life design, uh, for durability, then uh, to, to Show it in, on one slide. You need the basic information. These are material properties or material models. You find them in the chapter concrete. And you need the design models no, and the limit states. No. These are given uh, in the chapter for uh, evaluation of CLS no, for uh, durability. And both these chapters are well linked no, uh, in view of uh, durability uh, information given there. And uh, the classical analysis is shown here. This is the outline of the input, uh, the analysis, and the result. You have here input, uh, of course, the design approach, the mathematical equation, probabilistic equation. You have the material property here, as an example, the carbonation progress. You have some kind of transformation, and your result is uh, a reliability index, which de decreases uh, over uh, time. And you can introduce in this equation the designed uh, service life, maybe defined by the owner or maybe defined by a guideline. And this is the whole process if it is an LOA level four approach. We have to deal it in a different way if we have only level one or uh, level two approaches. And two minutes, two minutes, I tried my very best, okay. Um, well, you can see here uh, where we are uh, currently with our levels no, for the different uh, uh, degradation mechanisms. It's already been mentioned that extension has been done for carbonation introduced, corrosion and chloride introduced. We had it already in Model Code 2010. Slight modifications for uh, free soil resistance. No. New, very small chapters, level A1. Yeah. Uh, for alkali reaction and delayed etrangite uh, formation. Well, now, aging. Aging is very important. In many places, aging plays a big role. Uh, and uh, we had already in model code 2090 this simple equation, which is uh, results from basic considerations of uh, the physics. Uh, uh, on uh, processes, and we have gave, uh, and we have here this parameter S, and it depends on uh, concrete, co on the strength class of the cement you can see here, and a little bit on the compressive strength. If you go to model code 2010, the equation is pretty the same. We have introduced a, a, a reference age between 28 and 90 days, no? but we modified this uh, factor S. And if you look to the right-hand table, it looks pretty the same, uh, uh, some more figures. No? Here we had only four, now we have here nine. But the big difference is that we have here the strength classes of the concrete uh, and not the strength classes of the cement. 
And this is a really big difference. And you have to define well, what is the strength classes of the concrete? And you find this table also in chapter 14, and you have here well defined the strength classes, three strength classes, depending of uh, the type of cement, and of course, also the strength of the cement. But in addition, uh, you have to take into consideration if you have different kinds of binders, which may be used, for example, to uh, calculate an adapted water cement ratio or the water binder ratio. This, we have to modify this concept, and this table is quite new uh, and is very important. And to be honest, while in former times everything was covered with a simple table, this is here not the case. We have so many different cements on the market in different countries that it is impossible to bring them all to one table. So the, the application of this table needs some basic knowledge, but as all the designers are academics yeah, and should have a good education, I think we could trust them that they understand what is behind uh, this uh, table. Well, summary and conclusion. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chapter Concrete is a further stringent development of the Model Code 2010, and to be honest, also Model Code uh, 1990. Then uh, we have chosen a strength-based uh, approach for modeling concrete behavior, but it is now amended by a performance-based modeling approach. We have additional factors in all these equations where you can introduce the information of test results to improve the model which you would like to have. Then we have, I explained it, the distinction between conventional concrete and non-conventional concrete. It has to be introduced in view of the upcoming new concretes. No? And there is also given guidance for tests for these kinds of uh, concrete. Then uh, we write everything uh, in a way uh, which intends to facilitate the adaption of advantage in the field of uh, materials and engineering. So seeking that model code 2020 may be even applied when future progress in these technological areas occur. And last not least, no, all information uh, which is not design relevant, we have written a code. Uh, uh, but it is important uh, for the designer to know is summarized in a comprehensive background document where you can have many explanations which are not part of the code, which are more part of a textbook and uh, some commentary. They are given in a bulletin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.